Let us figure out what we're going to call them. But either way, we're getting ourselves into the match. Cloud9 in blue, Gravity in red. Got percentages for champions that aren't even there right now. All and Alistair or Bunny Tech. So if in case the bands are busted right now, um, Alistair, Hecarim, and Fizz are the three bands from Cloud9. Gragas and Callista are the two bands from Gravity right now. Yeah, once again, Alistar finding himself on the ban list. Men first pick very frequently, actually all across the world, as uh, bringing that tank power uh, and engaged power from the bottom lane. It's been huge for playmaking abilities. Let's see here, though. Kogma left up for Cloud9. They went back to that yeah, as both the games final ban. last week. Rise also on the table. Man, once ah, again, left up. Let's see if Gravity can do a better job of attacking him early, because you need to do it even more so than before. The efficacy of Rise's late game has never been in question, no matter what yep. stage of the game we've ever had. Now, though, with the changes, moving that level 16 power basically up to level 6, you have a smaller window with which to attack him, Yeah, and you need to make it count. Well, as we talk about what Jat was saying earlier with power picks and looking for equalized champions, the Rise goes on one side, the Gragas ban turns into the Rek'Sai pick for a move, the Sivir comes in with the Callista band away, you're seeing Gravity put that to the test right there. And yeah. You know, picking up high priority champions early on. As far as jungle goes right now, um, I don't feel like the priority is that high anymore if you're just spending one ban on jungle yeah. uh, to try and pick that up. Maybe it's because move uh, doesn't feel as comfortable on the new patch. We saw, you know, he was even playing Lee Sin, didn't have a very good time um, last week. And he really needs to have that comfort champion of Rek'Sai. But not only is Sejuani still very much a powerhouse in the Cinder Hulk jungle, True. but there are other options as well. Evelyn is extremely potent. Uh, and Evelyn is a great champion to have when you do have solo lanes that are susceptible to early pressure because she gives you that unseen presence. Always the other team has to question their moves um, unless they somehow get some intel on you, uh, because you could very well be up in that Rise's lane, and counter ganking for a Rise is one of the most successful strategies you can go with. He's amazing in two versus two situations, so definitely attracts a lot of jungler attention. Absolutely, so the question is then, what does Gravity pick to make that top lane two on two work? Can they flip that matchup back for themselves? Right now they're hovering on Hanser playing Haunted Maokai, maybe. Thrash comes in for Buddy Fufu, all the same. One of his best champions, absolutely, in Cloud9 to make their last few choices. So, comps so far. Gravity, once again, holding onto their mid lane for last, just like Team Liquid did. Cloud9 you know, hitting a bunch of tanks. I feel like Cloud9 need to get some strong lanes for their last two picks. It's very difficult if you have a Sejuani and a bunch of uh, er lanes that are susceptible to early pressure yeah. uh, to make it through the early game. So I think they need to at least get a couple of strong lanes, strong laning phase champions. If they went for a Kogma as well, that'd be too much scaling for them. And I feel like Gravity would be able to pressure them early, you know, transition into a mid game with Sivir and, uh, and run them down before they had a chance to scale up. Yeah, well, it does give them time, of course, to just pick lane bullies since they always have Rise for that back pocket late game scaling. Maybe like a LeBlanc from Incarnation. The Victor, though, looks like the pickup and Ezreal for Sneaky. Yeah, Victor, strong all around. Uh, definitely does have a great laning phase. Mm -hmm. So I like this from Cloud9. Definitely a different look, giving Incarnation uh, the tools that he needs to not come out of the early stages of the game with a 100 CS deficit. Yeah, so that would be ideal. Let's see how he does around this time on Victor. As, well, as far as Ezreal in the bottom lane, um, all around, Pretty safe pick there. It, it could be a lane swap as well. Uh, every time that we do see this, we have to account for that possibility. But you know, with Nautilus, he definitely has the ability to quickly jump on a pick if Nautilus does get a hook um, and add a pretty good amount of burst. Also, I kind of like what Reckless did on his bottom lane, Ezreal, where he did not go the tier. He just went straight into Trinity yeah. Force. Um, you skip that sort of trough where it's a bit easier to deal with if you're mid lane because you're safe and you can you know farm and stack up. Whereas bottom lane, you know, definitely very viable and a good uh, solution to go just straight for Trinity Force and then transition into you know life steal or bork or whatever. Yeah, well, Ezreal's a champ has been kind of really rising in popularity very recently. I, I'm still not quite sure why, and and based on my knowledge of Ezreal's strong points, I don't really love him 
in this matchup and oh. until we see the TF come through. So TF, Maokai, Rek'Sai, Sivir's in there as well. There's a lot of room to dive for the back line. At least Sneaky will be safe this time around, but uh, still unsure what the champion's going to be doing here in this game specifically. But Gravity, yeah, bringing out the Twisted Fate for Keen. First we've seen of him play that champion, I believe, in quite some time. His third champion in three games as Incarnation moves to his first victor game of his professional career. So I like, I do like what Gravity have done in champion selects here since they have been having, you know, some clarity issues with their shot calling. Yeah. Their team, this is a very clear team of right. Engage. They have TF, they have Teleport Maokai, they have Rek'Sai. This is a very, very clear, we have Sivir, Pop the Ultimate, Engage. So this is a very, very straightforward squad from Gravity. They have so many tools to engage. When they want to fight, they will be able to find it. Uh, can they get to that point uh, yeah. and get an early game lead? And something though. even a bit similar for Cloud9 as well. A bunch of team fight ults go show up and press R at the same time. Now, guys at home, remember to share your vote throughout the game. Tell us who you think is going to win this one. Tweet at a little esports. Send either hashtag C9win or hashtag GVwin to at a little esports on Twitter. Let us know what's going on. Here we go with game two of the day. Who's going to be victorious? Both these teams sitting at one and one so far. I think both teams picking up losses they didn't expect earlier on in the split. And now to make a statement here in game three of their seasons. All right. Well, I'm definitely going to keep my eyes on Medios as well. I'm always really curious what mindset he's in because, you know, last week he had a, an, a first game, early game, where he pulled off a bunch of ganks that were unsuccessful. And so he sort of reverted into hard farm mode the next game. This game, I think he, even though he's on Sejuani, he has an opportunity to try and attack TF early. Always like to go to the, the source of the global. Um, and with a victor, a strong victor lane for Incarnation this time around, maybe we see some Incarnation, Meteos uh, synergy that uh, we've heard about. Whoa. Wall's going to get a couple autos on the Hauntser, which he will brush off. You know, some Rises back in the day used to go uh, Twin and Utility. Mm -hmm. That would have given him three gold. <laughs> Not right. the case here. Yeah. But six uh, months ago, that would have been money. Yeah. Ryze is definitely a very different champion. Also, as we said, starts Doran's ring now. Um, mm -hmm. Mana Crystal, thing of the past. Don't get nearly as much bang for your buck out of it any longer. Yeah. AP, you get a lot more than you used to, so... Yeah, they don't itemize tank or CDR nearly as much. Frozen Heart is actually rare to be seen. Yeah. The one thing that is curious to me, as far as Ball's mastery, even if you do with the new rise, you usually go nine points in utility to get um, uh, biscuits and the extra uh, mana yeah. utility. So that is definitely one thing that's probably different, and we can check it after yeah, the I think game. He's nine defense. Um, but yeah, going nine defense here to try and shore up his uh, early game vulnerability rather than uh, get those mana utilities as well as biscuits. Double jungle here with the support. Since the lane swap uh, is going to get pulled off. Yeah. And that'll put Balls walking into a lane to absorb XP early on, while Hanser is simply walking around the jungle at this time. So this uh, rise level will happen. Yeah. Also, uh, Gravity bottom lane did take the Gromp. Uh, so they didn't have the chance to group up the minions and get them pushing towards, them, towards their side of the map. So Balls actually should not be denied too heavily. Oh, but you know who is going to be denied is Meteos here. You're seeing that Gravity managed to grab their red buff top side, get all the way down to this bottom jungle. Hauntser beelined it here, and Meteos is only going to get one buff on his first clear. Yeah, you can get a really, really early quick clear with the Maokai jump start of the sapling start for jungling. Uh, and they've already started to attack Meteos. So we'll see what he does when he reacts to no red buff. Fully cleared, so they will have the timer. Uh, Medios can go pick from his race. Let the dive on to rise. This time they get him before the turret. Ooh. Very close. He had to flash the hook before it landed. Even a pre-play sapling slows balls down. Here's the fight that enemy needs to take notes on. Here's the three-man cutoff that Cena can't do anything about. Yeah, they're zoning three people off of any income. No gold, no experience. They completely zone them from the turret because they got there first with the four-man squad. Now Cloud9, all they can do with three people, so inefficient. They're clearing Raptors bas with basically three people at the same time. All that has to happen now, Twisted Fate back off. He had a ward, and it was a very, very good uh, experience game there for Gravity. Yeah. Even though, you know, the gold is not going to reflect the advantage that Gravity just got until they take the turret, 
man, that was a very strong early move for them. Yeah. Well, it's keep in mind, aside from wasted time, though, Sneaky has the exact same thing of a 1v0 down in the bot lane. True. That, that you, you know, both teams have really just taken two lanes of experience themselves, but yeah, you're right as far true. as wasted time. There's not, like, nothing going on for the rest of C9 right here, and that bot lane turret is a, a sneeze away from dying here. As Keen fights up against Incarnation, Keen is winning this early lane, so despite getting a much stronger laner in Victor, Incarnation is losing the early laning phase for the second time here in the North American LCS. Yeah, so basically the advantage will be, hey, can Gravity get up and defend uh, their top side of the map? Because that's where Cloud9 have migrated to. The uh, early advantage not quite as big. I actually really like this timing, by the way, from all of Gravity. Alltech managed to get a pickaxe recall off the turret kill of the exact number of waves and number of minions they took down, which is a really awkward breakpoint for Sneaky's Ezreal. There's no good items to buy until 1,400 gold or so, when you could either get uh, most of pickaxe tier, which would go to Matamune, or a phage. So uh, really awkward timing for C9's dual lane if they do match back up, which looks to be where the Sibber is headed. Very well orchestrated early game by uh, Gravity. Let's see, though, because they have not accounted for uh, the double jungle here. Bunny is going to be... Now he has vision. See how he gets out of it. Ooh, and the lantern's down, though. Alltech's going to have to spell shield. Nope, just block. Okay, just kidding. They lose a pink ward, and that's about it. Yes, they will be you know, zoned a little bit longer from the minions. But as he said, bottom side of the map... Uh, they do have the extra lane of income this time around. Move freely farming the opposite jungle as well. So basically trading jungles here for both teams. Not too big of a deal. I, we've still yet to see Balls get money in any meaningful way. He's still double jungling alongside Meteos. And yet at this time, Hanser is in the lane getting golden XP. And Balls just like chilling in the jungle. Yeah. Now they've finally been able to shake it out into gravity having the three lanes of income. Um, their bottom lane was able to circle back around. Oh man, looks like one week's of work. One week's worth of work though has done absolutely wonders for gravity. Though these guys are, I don't know, everything I'm seeing, just moving around the map so much more cleanly than Cloud Nine right now. This looks so good from where I'm sitting. Meteos and Balls clear away pink ward in the jungle, and with a dead turret, Balls still unwilling to lane. He doesn't want to get killed off by move since he's still missing his flash from the level one. Huge risk aversion by Balls to not get snowballed on. Yeah, I mean, they would have to provide a whole bunch of vision, which they just, they're just they not equipped to do right now, to allow Balls to go to lane. And Hauntzer is doing a really good job of just nurturing his bottom wave. Uh, he, all he's doing is sort of pruning it, clear, clearing off uh, the last hits on minions. And he can keep it there indefinitely until Cloud9 come to force the issue and shove that lane all the way into the turret. They need to change the situation down bottom and make something happen because right now Hauntzer is just growing massive down there with the minions all to himself, able to keep them right in front of his turret. So they've sent Sneaky down to do the work. He is Ezreal, has his own dash plus a flash and heal ready. And uh, Lemon will follow shortly. All right, so the end gain here is Balls is level four with no XP. Hauntzer is level five and a half. As far as AD carries are concerned, Sneaky is basically six. Plus, Hauntzer has, has 500 gold on Balls as yeah, well. I mean, he, yeah, he's up 30 CS from farming, so... Uh, oh, geez. That's just... Yeah, it's a massive disparity. So XP uh, in the advantage and gold in the advantage, both of Gravity here. Great early plays by them. And Sneaky should be safe with the 1v1. Balls still jungles with Meteos as he's afraid of the top lane. Oh, man. I mean, Ryze has a late game, but how late's that game going to be when he's actually relevant? Yeah, as we said in Champion Select, cautioning against a lot of the scaling champions all at once. Uh, looks like they are content to just continue the double jungle here, though. Balls really wants to be able to at least purchase his tier so that he can stack up during the double jungle. And he's trying, to, scra that. trying to scrape together that last... 50 gold off of the Raptor camp. Yeah. So yeah, he can afford it after the recall now, finally. But you're right, a very long, long road ahead. That's the money for the combined, 200 and change. Right back over to Meteos. Now, Rek'Sai is about to hit six, by the way. Move is a camp away from that. Meteos, um, you know, five and change. So a bit of a disparity there, though he's going to slowly catch up. But as the lanes shake out, you're, you're just seeing more lanes get used by gravity. 
Plus, we are well past the um, time where turret um, protection drops off. So okay. Gravity should be able to take this lead, this early lead that they've gotten, and knock down the last two outer turrets very easily. Uh, yeah. The reduction in champion damage uh, gone. So Altec can take the top one or, you know, just deny as many minions as possible at the top one. And then if they can close out and switch him down to mid, they've taken the entire outer ring uh, and can start to make use of the TF and the Sivir to yep. catch people in rotations. This is a perfect early game for this set of champions for gravity. Absolutely. Uh, Keen's really, really set up to make some big plays here. There are not any... There's not much protection here for Cloud9 to hide behind and try to farm up. Absolutely. And, and speaking of people farming up, though, uh, Altec's gotten solo gold on both the outer turrets down so far. So here's a BF sword to add to his pickaxe, to add to his 70 minion kills. This guy is the scariest force on the map as far as raw damage output's concerned. Boomerang Blade's going to destroy people. And uh, Maokai and TF going to lock them down for those damage outputs. Yeah. Cloud9 have to be very careful. Is actually very curious. Cloud9, uh, this split have been such a poor early game team. They bank everything on farming up into the late game, whereas last split they were all about mid game. And you know it was this time where they'd start making objective trades. They'd start making very quick cross map movements to gain advantages on their opponents. Uh, but this split, they have been they've had a really hard time just in the very early stages. They have. Incarnation pretty much holding up in his lane. He is technically down in CS, but by a margin that you can consider acceptable, I suppose. If you're going to just do pass fail, he is technically behind Keen, though. Gravity going to make the move for a dragon. That'll be picked up pretty easily as well. So the third objective get picked up so far, 11 minutes in. C9 still with goose eggs and everything that matters. All right, level six Rek'Sai. Move, if he can get some tunnels down, even in neutral territory. He doesn't even have to get them that far into Cloud9 territory. Uh, Cloud9 can really not make side lane plays. They have to worry about a TF and the Rek'Sai global teleport abilities. Uh, anytime they even hint at going for a move, Keen can be there. Oh, never mind. His ultimate's used mid. Right in there. The flash play's gonna land. Exhaust is there, and there's first blood. Keen picks it up with a blue card for the extra damage. First blood on the board for Gravity. And it's Bunny's Roam that you have to worry about. Bunny Fufu Foo Foo able to come up after littering the red camp jungle from Cloud9 with wards. Sweeps right up into mid lane for the first blood. And Keen talked about him being set up for early success here with all the outer turrets down. He's got plenty of room to play with, and now he's got some cash to back it up. Well, that's going to be wonderful then. Abyssal Scepter Rush isn't enough for Keen, so. Uh, holding on to the uh, the match against Incarnation, not wanting to get chunked out. He gets to even take down the mid-outer turret almost by himself as Move and Bunny now show up to make it go. Three outer turrets picked up. I love the buy here from Keen. You can tell how he adapts his builds to what he's facing in-game. This is one of the most flexible players that we have in the North American LCS. This is an Ezreal with tier. This is a bottom lane Ezreal that has opted to go tier, not trying to you know skip that trough. The entire rest of the team is magic damage. So that Abyssal Scepter is hugely, hugely effective for Keen. I mean, even Ezreal's damage profile tended to be about half magic in team fights. I mean, this is yeah. a about as AP heavy a team as you could get in League of Legends unless you had support brand. That would be like the only difference. Yeah. So let's keep track of Haunter's build as well. See if he decides to go early magic resist because uh, I would recommend it. It looks like he is just going for the you know, Righteous Glory Rush as usual. They want to be able to force those moves, mm -hmm. as we said, with the Teleport Maokai, Righteous Glory, TF. You have plenty of things to engage with. Sivir going to boost them all up as well. Yeah. Move's going to move really fast in this game, that's for sure, with all the things picked up in this team. And here we go. Cloud9 sitting down 3,000 gold 13 minutes in. Gravity have earned every bit of that advantage. Bunny so far has been a fairly quick study to his new role. Coach Cop helping as well, I must imagine. The gravity looking, I would say the best, it's only been three games, but the best hat they have all split, certainly. Yeah, and once again, they've got one of the waves. Haunter up top, he's babysitting these minions, uh, keeping them right in front of his turret, denying Cloud9. He can keep those there until they decide to come shove it into the wave. So Cloud9 have to make a cross map play. They've decided to go for bottom, for Keen. 
Um, teleport could go off. There's the Rek'Sai. They do have summoner teleport, and that would be a three versus four. Right now, they've been able to at least salvage the turret, keep Hanser up top so that they can keep that extra lane of experience and gold coming in. Looks like it may converge into a five versus four here as Incarnation, eh, it looks like they're debating the call, and he heads back mid. Yeah, it looks like Cloud9 are trying to head things off, keep all the lanes under control as best they can. They've still got no one to head off against Haunter, who's now level 9 here. Yeah, all Haunter has to do, all Gravity have to do is keep the game with nothing. Oh gosh, Incarnation stunned up, pops the cleanse this time around, will get away as best he can from Alltech. The ult is on a summoner heal means another gold card will likely lock it in. Big boomerang blade move takes it away, 2-0 Gravity. Kane's not even using his teleport to go after other lanes. He's just coming straight back to attack Incarnation uh, with some member of the bottom lane there. There's your Sivir ultimate. Boom, yep. chase down. Gold card number two. And they've got presence in the mid lane. Will they be able to trade turrets, though? Gravity, they still had their presence down bottom, so Sneaky was able to grab that turret. Looks like they're going to make uh, some headway here on number two. A long way to the minion wave. Oh man, Gravity is absolutely crushing this game right here. Four turrets to one. Cloud9 have one objective on the board overall. I just don't see how Cloud9 are going to be able to kill this Maokai in mid-game. Hanser is getting so, so rich, and he has a very clear build path. As far as tanks go, if you see this team on the enemy squad, then you get very happy because you can build pure magic resist, extremely effective. His only HP item probably going to be that um, righteous Glory, and then no go three Spectre's cowl, whole, yeah, whole bunch of magic resist. Looks like first major item after Juggernaut being, uh, sorry, Cinder Hulk being locket for move. Sightstone help the vision seems pretty standard for these junglers, but mm -hmm. the magic method to turn into that. Interesting, also seeing uh, as of 5.10 there were um, buffs to Ancient Coin, and Bunny Fufu actually went oh. for that, and not for the Targon's Brace. Certainly a lot more gold income. Yeah. But uh, in two on twos, I find the lack of tank stats actually really hurtful for Thresh. But as it was a lane swap, they didn't get punished at all. In the late game of Here's Ancient a Coins, very good. Now Hans are getting jumped on. This is a one versus four. He hadn't bought in forever, sitting on 2,000 gold. Gets popped up. Kill for balls. Cloud9 finally with one of those mid game map movements to grab a kill and pressure on top turret. Can they take it down before Keen gets there? It looks like with, ha uh, okay, three people staying, they'll easily be able to get it, even if Keen does arrive. So Cloud9 able to grab some of the global gold back. This is, yeah, the mid game starting to look a whole lot better for C9. The early game definitely rough, but these guys have answered back just a little bit. 4,000 gold still the advantage for gravity. Should, should cost them a dragon though, because they committed everybody up top. Yeah. So gravity stacking dragons, two by 17, not exceptionally quick. Uh, so Cloud9 won't have to worry too much about number five uh, very quickly, but it does mean that eventually gravity have the ability to try and draw Cloud9 away from turrets where gravity are free to use all of their movement spells and try and get one of those advantageous uh, fights where they get someone flanking in from the side, where they get a pincer movement, um, and just have TF teleport in and force the issue. Absolutely, and that TF ulti is back up. Dragon 5 would happen around 36 minutes if they got it roughly on cooldown. So, not incredibly late, but certainly not a, a rush, as you were saying. Yeah. Um, we'll see if that pans out over time. So far, a pretty low kill game, but twice as many turrets picked up for every kill on the board. Gravity still in control right here. C9 doing what they can to eke advantages back. Luden's Echo gets completed for Incarnation, so Wave Clear is pretty strong. It's actually allowed him to eclipse Keen and minion kills. Yeah, Wave Clear is number one priority when you get so behind like this. Sneaky's not going Triforce. He did Mana Mune right into uh, the oh. components for a uh, Blade of the Ruin King. I mean, you talked about scary Monster. tanks. Yeah. Let's get a Ruin King ASAP. And if he goes for just basically auto-attack focused Ezreal, that'll actually be, I think, a smart adaptation against a no-armor team. Yeah. Let's see if he's gonna have the line of sight to take down Maokai. One of the problems Ezreal does, you know, work with. If he does get line of sight, though, you know, extra stacks of the percent health damage. We'll 
see a good blue buff steal by Gravity. You can see how much respect Cloud9 are giving them the early levels from Balls. He refused to land against Maokai without Flash or a turret behind him. Blue buff attempt, not even a glimpse from C9. They're aware of Gravity's power levels right here, and Gravity, aware of their own, are taking everything they possibly can. 70 minion lead in the top lane. Even Alltech has managed to build a farm lead over Sneaky. And remember, this is Rise. This is the champion that builds two scaling mana items. The tier as well as the Rod of Ages. Rod of Ages not even completed by 20 minutes here for Balls. Ouch. So it will be a long time coming, uh, the power of this Rise. It will take a Just while for it now. to scale up. So Gravity definitely have an opportunity, uh, as far as the mid game goes, to try and press Cloud9. All right, let's see. The pressure's on as the tier is stacked and the Rod of Ages has just begun. Manamune, of course, still stacking up as well. I mean, you talk about scaling champions. Of course, Ezreal tends to fit that mold. I know you referenced that before, but bringing it back up. Baron's now on the table 20 minutes in. I don't imagine that getting rushed down, but if the situation permits, you never know. So far, Balls has yet to find himself a farm lane like the one Hanser had had earlier on. So the big magic is tank versus the Still gold-starved carry top laner. Looks like Move's gonna find Balls. TFL comes in as well. Can Rise get out? He sees, yeah. yeah, he sees the entire team of Cloud9 at his back. One of the benefits of uh, TF Ultimate, you can pause for a moment and say, nope, just kidding. And decide if you are going to tunnel vision or not. Yeah. Very keen on the Twisted Fate to not go in there. 5,000 gold lead now, slightly stretching over time as Gravity are holding the driver's seat still. And Cloud9 make an incursion into Gravity territory. After the TF ultimate was blown, they uh, saw a recall down bottom from Sivir, so they take that opportunity to get a ward down. This is something that they've Very pretty much fun. always done, is they really value those deep wards, so anytime you get that small opportunity to go get one down, rush in there with a couple people uh, backing up Lemonation, and they're able to grab one deep ward for a little bit of vision. That is, uh, you know, taken out actually very quickly by <laughs> Gravity. So all that hard work uh, using that timing window. Hey, they made him blow a super there. cooldown, okay? All right. Bunny Fufu had to press T. Who puts it on T? I do. Freak. Nobody's going to get that reference. Whatever. Okay, it's on four. Whatever. I don't care. Whatever the keyboard bind. I know a guy ah. who called Clash on A, by the way. All right. Well, on button number one here, maybe he could have it. I don't know. Spectator does weird things. Uh, Keen's got Azonia's Hourglass. So we really are we're looking for Gravity to make those moves. They have everything to make those uh, yeah. initiations happen. And obviously, that's what Keen is looking for. He's looking for a frontline TF. Keen's got the Abyssal straight into Zonia. So he wants to make a Messiah play, teleport in, bait out as much as you can from Cloud9, and pop that invulnerability. And static shift done for the AD carry as well. Oddly enough, though, both AD carries sitting on two items here. Though Altec has gotten all the local gold from turrets, he's only sitting on an assist. And the farm equals out, so... Though Muramana is still stacking up, Sneaky does have oh, two items. Gravity have a, have a ward perfect for Hanser to teleport in behind the team. He's recalling. He should teleport on that ward. That would be a four first five initiation. But the turret's going to die too fast, and no one's in range anymore. Yeah, it was... Uh, guys. They were six seconds away from that being just a kill. Home guard does get picked that, up by Hanser there, but yeah. All right, no, all right. That no initiation, deal. that should have been that should have been action. I'm yeah. sorry for this silent crowd right now. They should have been able to see some fireworks there. Because even if <laughs> <laughs> even if Balls answers the teleport on Rise, it's a reactionary teleport. He'll come yeah. in later. Plus, he's he does not have the teleport impact that a Maokai does coming from behind you. The perfect flank right there. I absolutely agree. I mean, that you're right. And, and so for all I plays Gravity, there's an example of, you know, there's something they missed. There, there's an engage that Gravity could have had that could have put them even farther ahead. And I mean, you can see the evidence of it as well with how much space C9 is typically giving these guys and how rare their incursions are. Yeah, Gravity even had them up against a turret to work with. True. The best place. All right, well, let's see what they do around Dragon because they've gotten the first two. They want yeah. to chain that. They want that to be one of the ways that they can add late game pressure. And there's no adder turrets left for C9 to trade for. They managed to get a couple, that was really good. Okay, C9 have mostly equalized the turret score, but 
Gravity's still sitting on a huge farm lead, a huge gold lead. Dragon 3 is on the map. Cloud Manor first to mid lane. But Altec able to clear that away very cleanly. Gravity get the inside track still on Dragon. These guys have ward coverage up with a 5k gold lift set. They're even starting Dragon. All right, this is uh, this so is risky. Curious, curious situation. Right. Wild cards come in for a little bit of poke. Move goes in for the steal. Gets, Gets it. it. Fight begins. Buddy Fufu low on health. Knocked up by Nautilus. Kill goes to balls. Incarnation stays alive so far. Keen getting just evaporated. Pops the Zonia's Levination flashes out. Balls oh! dies right left by Keen. That's multiple kills picked up. Two for one so far. Meteor's got nowhere to go. Three for one. Flash by Hauntzer. Dragon gets stolen, and it's going to be four kills for one. Gravity crushed that fight. Wow. I can't believe Keen actually flashed out of that ult. That was a really well-timed ult from Sneaky, almost sniping him. But the insta-flash there from Keen, he's able to survive. I'm not really sure why Cloud9 is starting this one up, but uh, move gets the steal anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then Cloud9 are trapped in here. TF's on the outside, throwing wild cards. Keen jumps in. Remember, he's built to be a frontline TF. So even though Meteos caught him and he got the combo there with wow. Incarnation, they still weren't able to take him out because of the defensive way that Keen built his early magic resist. He was able to survive. Gravity got the dragon. They got the four kills and transitioned into Baron. So Cloud9, they had some of those good mid-game calls that we were talking about. You, you mm -hmm. mentioned the outer turrets they were able to uh, sneakily take down, uh, steal purpose? away from gravity, but uh, rushing into uh, headlong into a mid-game dragon fight there. Gravity are able to collapse and take. Let's see what they can do with this Baron, though. That is a really big tool they need to make use of. Leverage this Baron into some deeper turret kills. Well, I think it's going to be a pretty high likeliness of that. They do have wave clear on Cloud 9 side. Victor and Ezreal both pretty good at that. But Baron buff is on a big gold lead and two tier two turrets still to kill is likely to happen for Gravity. Yeah. I think Gravity are probably going to continue to look for split push. Um, while Keen has built uh, the defensive route for all these mid-game fights, he did just pick up a Sheen. So he's going to have a bit extra pushing power if he does get a split push off. And of course, you want to have as many lanes of Baron up minions as possible to make work. Looks like uh, could be a possible collapse on balls there. Top lane, 4 1 split push for Gravity. Looks like he's safe right now, though. 8,000 gold leaders. Gravity do look very good in this one. A small number of missteps, but overall, a great game by them. They're in onto this top lane tier 2. Keen will be the split pusher of choice, set down to the bottom lane. That's going to be easy for him. And with that sheen, as you mentioned, he will knock down turrets pretty fast. <gasps> Got his Zonia's back up. No summoners available. Ghost should be available by the time he gets anywhere near danger, though. So he'll be able to work with that. Sneaky's the one to go and answer the split push. We'll see how well they can hold here. Sivir is short range, but does have the spell shield here. Looks like the wave clear is just too much for Cloud9, even with just uh, balls. Able to pop his ultimate. There we go. Bot lane two two now under fire by Twisted Fate. Gravity looking for turret number five. Sneaky, the man sent to defend against him. Yeah. Even just the minions. Like this is the thing about why we keep mentioning uh, you want to get as many lanes of Baroned up minions. Even if you don't get your champion autos off on the turret, mm -hmm. just empowering up the cannon and a couple of, of uh, melees. You'll make a lot, a lot of headway on those turrets. Top one down, uh, bottom one probably soon to follow here, especially as Altec starts to move. And Cloud9 just trying to scrape together whatever they can. They don't lose it in hip turret just yet, but they've lost tier two top lane. Ezreal, Sneaky still holding on decently against Keen. The health bar is going down slowly, but not gone. He blew ult to clear the way of away this time around. Baron buff ending. Oh, he's gonna steal it! By now. It's the small things in life, freak. Nice. Like big crugs. <laughs> Alright, Baron buff is gone. Gravity got a turret kill for that. Again, we're seeing teams play rather slowly with big leads like this, really unwilling to siege heavily. 
This is a team with like a twisted fate. Like Chunky Turrets isn't that hard with this kind of composition, but teams have over the last few months yeah. been very slow to knock bases down. They're playing much and more for the global objectives. While there have been a lot of games like that, uh, they've been fairly different, right? Some of the games are teams just massacring the other team early on, and they so they got all these kills and they have a bunch of gold, and it tends to feel like they're having fun getting a lot of kills. This game. Uh, feels a little bit more stressful for Gravity uh, because pretty much all of their advantages were objective-based and through map movements. Uh, so the choice here uh, is just to continue on and control the neutral objectives. They had those three dragons. Stack up number four here um, and not you know, want, really wanting to take any chances with the scaling power that Cloud9 do have. Yeah. Balls, has, Balls has finally gotten his you know, Rod stacked and his Seraph transformed, so. Yeah. Well, that's getting the weird there. thing, though, is, is you're saying, you know, they don't want to take any risk with the skill and composition, but waiting till 50 minutes to win a game is exactly the kind of risk you don't want to take. I'm not saying it's going to take them 20 minutes, but uh, they're certainly giving a little bit more time for balls to grow. Hans are now being left alone on an island in the top lane. He's going to get found out here. Mid lane. will pop, and they're going to go to push down mid. Hanser will die, but so will the mid inhibitor, most likely. He's trying to run away. It's a very tanky tree, but finally falls in the forest. Someone's around it here. An incarnation of wave clear mid, but the turret's still going to drop. Keen takes some damage, but here comes the fight for the inhib. No, they back out. Yeah, they need to leave four versus five. Uh, definitely don't want to give anyway any more kills to Cloud9. Cloud9 seconds. On his chase. Ah. Super ultimate works both ways. Yeah. Yeah, good attempt by C9. I think the right choice to go in for that fight. But smart enough, I grab it to be out of range of all the engage tools. Okay, you need to watch the death timer now. Cloud9, they only have 15 seconds to burn this dragon down. Uh, basically, all of gravity right now are just waiting for Hanzo to come back up as well. How will Cloud9 exit this area? Sneaky's really low on mana. They if gravity can right. keep him balled up here, buy time for the teleport. It's a home guarded Maokai. Now, is there anything to TP2? Yeah, he's going to TP2 the tunnel entrance. Move gets stunned, though. They're trying to chase him down, and they catch balls on the backside. Rise has nowhere to go. Dies to Altec. They trade one for one. Keen is on the run, but Lemonation going to die first. The Flash gets followed by Hanser. It's a two for one off the Dragon. And there's time now for Gravity to push. Mm, interesting. Mid is open right now. But they're not making the call to bring Keen with them, who doesn't have teleport. Oh, I almost back off a cooldown. He should be able to get there. It's just Incarnation was wave clear right now. Sneaky's ult is down. TF ulti pop. Incarnation can't stand this far up. And doesn't even matter if minions anyway. Inhibitors are easy to take with just a numbers advantage when they do so. Mid and hip goes down. 32 seconds on Baron. The team will be well respawned by then. Good response there from Gravity. Cloud9 were able to interrupt the chain of dragons and push that number five back. However, costing them the two kills as well as inhibitor. Uh, it's a huge amount of pressure that Gravity can gain from that inhibitor because they're all about the split push already. And Baron comes up in 10 seconds. If you have the mid lane shoving down, it gives you a lot of vision and a lot more control uh, around that Baron with which to... Uh, bolster your vision game around that area. Well, Cloud9 trying to play that vision game right now as they head over into the uh, Northwestern River. A couple of wards down into the jungle. But with the mid inhibitor dead, of course, they've got to... Re Ooh, almost gets the steal. Smite forced to be used. And here comes the engage from Hotzer. TP in from Balls to the backside. And the kite back by Sneaky is good. But Lemonation going to drop down way too quickly. And Keen's going to find Balls with a gold card. Double kill for Hotzer's Maokai. And now Mita's in the front line. is going to be the third casualty picked up there as Ooh. well by the TF. Sneaky's going to drop. That's four kills in this fight. Alltech on the move. Looking for kill number three. Once Incarnation gets stunned with the gravity field. But now an open mid lane and 30 second Going respawn to timers. Game. Don't need Baron. They're looking for the next. I don't know if they're going to kill it quite in time. It's going to be, I think, close. This is such a test of Bunny's shot calling. Bold to go for the Nexus rather than grabbing Baron, the safer call. But see if he's got the timing right here. All right, 10 seconds on balls. 10 now on Meteos. Turret number one is down. This is going to be it, I think. Turret number two down as well. Incarnation cannot clear the wave. Lemonation's here, and nope, out they go. All right, so he learned something from this. Uh, as far as judging the mid-game push that they do have. Yeah. That will be a lesson that Bunny can take home. And it doesn't cost them much. Yes, they were not able to take Baron. Baron would have been the better choice, you know, seeing. Yeah. Uh, an opportunity cost them Baron. After. But 
They can still return to it. They still have plenty of vision control. They still should be able to get it. Uh, but he I did get to judge. I think they're saying, if you went for the rush, Baron, we're going to be here in time for you. Keen heading down towards the bottom side of the river. Cloud9 are going to go for ward control here, and they will start the Baron. There's Keen no has ulti. For it. On Maokai. So he's got home grab. He's got a walk. This is going to be a Baron rush. Ulti pop. Here comes Destiny. Balls gets hooked again. These guys are staying on Baron. Now they turn back towards move. Sneaky has nowhere to go. Altec takes him out. Keen gets focused, but that man has a Zonia's Hourglass. Wasted damage. Balls goes down to Altec. Now the push on towards Medios and Lemon. At the same time, a triple kill for the new AD carry. Goes for Lemon. Keen takes the fourth. And yet again, Incarnation, the last man limping out. And yet again, gravity goes towards mid. Yeah, every time Cloud9 have tried to start a neutral objective, they've paid for it. This one was obviously a desperation because they were so far behind. Not oh, cool, man. Incarnation gets one for himself. All right, two, three, and three. KDA over one, but Hauntzer's going to have an easy time walking away from this turret. Not a problem at all. There's no turrets defending the Nexus. That's going to be GG. Gravity in 35 minutes knocks down Cloud9. Improves to two and one. All right, definite improvements for Gravity uh, after week one. Some yeah. good cross-map play for the opening of the game. They've got themselves such a substantial lead from the lane swap. Also, we're even able to learn a few things in the late game. Yeah. Man, I actually sat in as we uh, had interviewed Bunny Fufu for all the features we've been seeing today about him and Alltech together. And one of the things he mentioned was talking about uh, learning how to play lane swaps now with a lot of the direction from the old team gone. The amount of sort of knowledge and proper prediction displayed in this one. They three buff them. They, uh, Gravity, you know, cut off Cloud Nine to escape the other side of the map. They got the turret kill. They got a pickaxe recall to further imbalance the dual lane. The first like 18 minutes were played so incredibly well by Gravity. And I got to give so much of this credit to Bunny Fufu, the man on your screen right there. What a well played game. Definitely a well-deserved victory for Gravity, adjusting to the roster changes that they made in the offseason. Yeah. Cop as well, moving into the coaching position. Props to him for working with Bunny and the rest of the team. And it's one of the first tests for Gravity as well. Week one, they played Enemy Esports and TDK. And, you know, you could consider those sort of not very difficult to put it, potentially. They're the two challenger teams joining in. You don't know how strong those teams are. They play up against Cloud9, the guys who beat TSM opening day, and you're like, okay, <laughs> that's pretty darn good. Props to Gravity. They're clearly showing that the roster moves have done well. Move himself, only one death all game. I mean, this was a, a controlled game. This is the type of game we don't see Gravity normally play. And right now under Cop and Bunny Fufu, it's a good bit of growth by these New guys. New Gravity. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, you know, Gravity's really taking off. <laughs> Their icon's a rocket ship. It's like right over our heads over there. You'll see it next time the camera pans out. Overall, though, absolutely great game by them. C9, they do have some things still to learn. Another game where they get behind early on and don't quite pull it back either. We're going to see what the pros have to say about that game. Right now, we've got 